Let's take a look at our eight-day pilgrimage in Ireland. We began at Whitefriars Church for early morning mass, as well as the place where St. Titus, during a part of his life, uh, stayed at this monastery. They also have Our Lady of Dublin there in the shrine and St. Valentine. We then walked around the external of St. Patrick's Cathedral, which is now under Anglican control. We went to the shrine of the Venerable Matt Talbot uh, at Our Lady of Lourdes Church to learn about his life and the legacy that he left behind. Matt Talbot himself experienced alcoholism from a very young age, but then became sober and is a real testament to people that struggle with addiction to reach out to him. John Sullivan was the next church that we did at Francis Xavier Church. John Sullivan was someone that really focused on vanity until his life was turned around and he gave it to Christ, becoming a priest and serving others. From visiting with John Sullivan, we then continued on our pilgrimage to St. Peter's Church outside of Dublin to see St. Oliver Plunkett. A uh, beautiful shrine to St. Oliver Plunkett and just learning about his life, legacy, and witness. Truly, it moved me personally to tears. Continuing on our journey, we went to the monastery founded by St. Booth. Uh, there we found the ruins and some of the high Celtic crosses that we were able to see during our uh, pilgrimage and to, to kind of go around the ruins and see what life would have been like thousands of uh, years ago. We went on to the St. Bridges Shrine. Uh, in the area where she was born, as well as to her well. Throughout Ireland, there are more wells for St. Bridget than St. Patrick. We continued on our journey the next day to St. Down Patrick, uh, where this church is now under Anglican control, but it is the tomb and the place of burial for St. Patrick. It is also told to be the burial of St. Bridget, as well as St. Columba. A short distance away, we went to the Church of Saul. This is uh, where St. Patrick, upon returning to Ireland after having been enslaved in Ireland, he comes back as a priest. And this is the very first church that he established in this area here, the Church of Saul. Uh, we were able to go and kind of around the small church, and then we were able to go to a local hill where they have the largest statue of St. Patrick. We uh, made our way up the hill, praying the Stations of the Cross along the way. And ultimately, uh, you're rewarded this uh, hike up the hill uh, to a beautiful statue of St. Patrick, uh, the largest in the country, as well as to really, truly breathtaking views, especially for this Texas girl that is used to flat land in the areas of Texas that I have been born. Uh, so St. Patrick, obviously one of the patron saints of Ireland, but also uh, just throughout the world, really well known. Uh, from St. Patrick's uh, in the area of Northern Ireland, we drove on to Patrick Payton Center. Uh, at the Patrick Payton Center, we were able to spend the night at the Melody House as well as to learn about Patrick Payton, an Irish boy that came to America and became known as the Rosary Priest. He coined the phrase, the family that prays together stays together. Uh, so following in the footsteps of those that came before us in the ancient times as well as the more modern times, Patrick Payton was known for radio, television, and film, and really helping to get people uh, to pray together. We were able to go to the center as well as the church that he would have grown up in uh, to see the priest that would have inspired Patrick Payton to follow his vocation, as well as the site where he was baptized at. From there, we journeyed on to Our Lady of Knock to the shrine. Now, this is a Marian apparition, but it's also a Eucharistic uh, apparition. Uh, as you see there in the images by the gable roof, it was on the side of the wall. Uh, where for about two hours an apparition occurred where uh, the Eucharist, uh, the Lamb of, of God, appeared on an altar with a cross behind him, angels descending and going around him. To the side of him was St. John the Evangelist, uh, Our Lady, as well as St. Joseph. Uh, thus, the town name being knocked, she became known as Our Lady of Knock. Uh, during this apparition, no words were spoken. Various people of different ages came and prayed in the rain. And probably one of the things that I enjoyed the most um, we were able to celebrate Mass here, we were able to go to confession, they had spiritual direction, they had a beautiful museum, but I really enjoyed, at the end of our trip, we prayed outside of where they have built a, a church around where the apparition happened, and we prayed in the rain, just as those people did a hundred plus years ago. From there, we traveled on and uh, we did uh, the the climb, uh, the hike up Krogh Patrick. Uh, what it, legend has is that Patrick uh, went up here for Lent, he uh, spent 40 days fasting and praying on this mountaintop. And I will say for me, the entire pilgrimage of Ireland, uh, this was by far the best prayer time that I had because it was the time that I really was just focused on God. The incline, uh, the, the walk was so steep the whole way that you really had to pay attention to your footing in front of you. You couldn't just stop and kind of look at views as you were walking that sometimes you might be able to experience. And so you're really focusing on each step ahead of each other. It was a very difficult uh, climb going up the mountain. Um, and it really allowed uh, for a great amount of prayer for me personally. Ballytuber Albert, uh, we went on to there. Uh, and Ballytuber Albert, this story is really awesome. Uh, 
the church, uh, like many abbeys, was destroyed by uh, the Protestants or the Anglicans at the time that they were taking over Catholic churches and changing them. Uh, they burned the roof down, Cromwell did, and he did this thinking that that would stop the people from worshiping. For about 200 years, the people continued to gather in the church without a roof and continued to pray and worship in rain and snow as grass grew up in their fields until they could get the roof installed. So this has been a functioning church uh, for over a thousand years. So truly an incredible sight. They had absolutely amazing grounds and prayer spaces. And one of the other neat things about this site is they had a well that was attributed to St. Patrick uh, and, and healings that have been associated there as well. Uh, from praying at Ballet Tumor, we went on to the famous Kyle Moore Abbey, uh, a place of a Benedictine community still to this day. We were able to join them for Vespers that evening. So that was really lovely. Um, and so at Kyle Moore Abbey, it's a beautiful place with beautiful grounds. Um, and the sisters that had to leave in persecutions, uh, they founded a school here. And now it's just the community. The school is no more at Kyle Moore Abbey. From there, as we uh, traveled on in our pilgrimage, uh, we uh, went to uh, St. Coleman's Abbey that he founded. Uh, throughout Ireland, you see so many places where these saints came, where they established monasteries, places for people to grow closer to God in prayer and in study. Um, and St. Coleman's uh, monastic grounds are really quite lovely. We have the round towers, we have the churches, the arches. Uh, you're able to see some of the detail. It was really quite beautiful. So this was St. Coleman's Abbey, um, and ultimately where he was buried was right there in that last image. Uh, one of the things that St. Coleman, at one point, he wrote to St. Columban saying, you know, hey, I had a mouse and a bird that I had trained to do work for me and they died and I'm really sad. And the response of the saint was just, we'll appreciate what you had for them. Now, these images are from the Burren, which is just a field, field of rocks. Uh, and this is uh, now under the Church of Ireland, but this is where St. Brendan the Navigator is buried at. Um, unfortunately, this church was locked. A lot of the churches of Ireland uh, were not open, uh, but this is where uh, he is buried, right outside there at that tomb. From there, you can go to the Cliffs of Mohair. Um, real windy day, so hold on. And uh, the next day we went around, we drove around the Ring of Kerry to go to the town of Cavachine, where Margaret Mary Murphy Healy uh, this is the church in the hometown she's from. Now, this is not the church that would have been the active parish when she was alive, uh, but they did have a monument there for her um, to, to share her story and the sisters that came after her. Uh, there's also um, a real famous priest that's buried there that did a lot for the people. Uh, from there, uh, we did visit Blarney Castle where you we were, we were able to kiss the Blarney Stone. Hence why this video is such a beautiful speaking because I now have the gift of eloquence. Uh, you know, so visiting Blarney Castle and then um, after visiting Blarney Castle, uh, we had a chance to continue on our pilgrimage. Uh, so really Blarney Castle, the Cliffs of Mohair, those were the only things that we did on the trip that weren't specifically pilgrimage sites. We went on to the area where uh, St. Declan is from. Uh, St. Declan, one of the earliest uh, saints uh, in Ireland uh, that bring Christianity to Ireland. This is where he was buried at underneath this church. Um, the abbey ruins were pretty remarkable. And what was really kind of impressive at St. Declan's was some of the art that had been carved into the buildings. Uh, this is near the, sh the coast and it has stored the test of time. So we have Adam and Eve there, uh, the scene. We have the three magi coming and bringing gifts to the child. Um, we have the two mothers going to King Solomon. So that artwork has been preserved for a very, very long time. And that's pretty awesome. So uh, St. Declan there in Ardmore, this was a stone uh, that, uh, that believed that stuff had traveled with him. We went to the well uh, that's believed to have healing powers associated with St. Declan. Uh, just a really beautiful opportunity down there. Um, as we made our journey through Ireland, uh, we then went on to the Rock of Cashel. Uh, this church is an ancient church, uh, really well-preserved historical and heritage site for Ireland. Um, it actually outlasted uh, where the other abbeys got destroyed uh, during their initial aid time of the Anglican uh, takeover of Ireland. This church lasted. It did get taken over, but it wasn't destroyed by the armies. Um, unfortunately, um, later an Anglican bishop uh, did not appreciate the walk that he had to do for going to the cathedral. And so he uh, decided to have the military burn the roof off of the cathedral so that then he can say, well, guys, that's no longer our cathedral. We have to build a new one. So a really sad thing. Um, and as you know, if you know, I love the story of King David at the time of year kings go off to war. Laziness is the start of all sins so often when we get lazy in our spiritual life. Um, but still a beautiful site to visit with some really uh, wonderful uh, artwork that has been preserved over the time. 
Uh, but real sad to think that, you know, 200 years ago, because of somebody's laziness, they literally burned down, um, you know, the roof off of a church. So really sad. This at the Rock of Cashel was where the choir area stayed. You know, many of the European uh, churches would always have famous choirs. Literally, that would be somebody's kind of full time occupation to be part of the choir there at the church. We continued driving on to go to where St. Kevin was in Wicklow. Uh, so, you know, the scenery we've constantly seen changing, and that's the round tower associated with St. Declan. We then went to Kildare, where St. Bridget is from. Uh, unfortunately, the Church of uh, Ireland's doors were once again closed. Um, and then we went to St. Finian's Church. Now, what was exciting about finishing our pilgrimage at St. Finian's is uh, the abbey that St. Finian founded. He was originally a hermit, but then he founded an abbey. At one point, 3,000 men were studying monastically, uh, growing in holiness at the site. And under St. Finian, what becomes known as the the 12 apostles of Ireland. Uh, they come underneath St. Finian to study under St. Finian, and then they get dispersed, not just through Ireland, but through other parts of Europe. So the Irish really um, leave a legacy of our faith throughout the world. Uh, definitely a beautiful pilgrimage, and if you haven't ever made a pilgrimage to Ireland, I would encourage you to go to Ireland on pilgrimage. 